down there is Prince William Sound, Alaska. 15,000 square miles of paradise. But no road in, no road out. Down on this narrow strip of coastline, over 3,000 Alaskan black bear congregate. One of the densest populations of black bear in the world. Two bears for every square mile. Why here? Why now? Because there will also be over tens of thousands of salmon. I'm here to embed myself with the Alaskan black bear to get down in where they are. To learn their survival techniques. There'll be no humans where I'm going. Just me and the bear. The Alaskan black bear has a small window of time to make the most of the salmon spawning in this network of bays in southern Alaska. But it's a moment that gives me a brief opportunity to see them in action. Before I take one step into their territory, I'm meeting with local wilderness guide Dennis Sadra. He spent decades observing black bears in Prince William Sound. And he knows firsthand the challenges and dangers of walking into bear country. Tell me what I can expect out there. Um, the bears, you know, they know that this is their opportunity to put on their weight. You know, the last probably six weeks or so, a bear is going to put on fat that he needs to get through the winter. And then winters are cold and they're, you know, it's dark and they need all this energy. They've got to grab this protein while they can. It's a real narrow window of opportunity. What's particularly... Uh, dangerous for me in this situation well you're going into their feeding grounds you know we've had three people killed in this state this year by black bears you got to be cautious of all of them any of them can can change in the blink of an eye and especially when you're in that close to them that's when it happens you know in order to stay safe i'll need to stay focused Prince William Sound has thousands of miles of bays just like this one. Bears travel here from far and wide to feed on the salmon run. Getting in close enough to these bears to learn their survival techniques is going to be challenging for me and my crew. Turn around. This is magnificent. Time to get into bear country. And this is perfect bear country. There are over 100,000 black bears in Alaska and 3,000 in this region alone. Following the clues to their favorite feeding grounds will place me in prime position to observe these animals up close. See, there's fish up here on the shore, but this is, I can almost guarantee that this fish is just a fish that's died. It's not from bear activity. You see that rump? Nutrient rich, lots of fat and oils in the rump. The black bears are gonna wanna be eating primarily the rump, the brain out of the males, and the roe, the, the eggs out of the females. That's where all the nutrients are. If the bears are feeding well, they'll focus on those parts of the body of the fish. If they're really hungry, they'll just eat the whole thing. These strategic fishing habits are a key component of the black bear's survival instincts, and they serve to maximize their energy as winter approaches. When I find evidence of this efficient feeding, I'll know I'm on the right trail. What I hope and expect to find moving up into here is bear scat that's filled with decaying salmon roe. And it'll indicate that I'm close to pay dirt when it comes to finding a spot where the bears are feeding. All right, I'm about to head up into the bear zone. So, time to become a little more stealthy. A 
along with me is a team of wildlife cameramen following my journey and covering as much of the black bear's activity as possible. Look at that. There it is, my first signs. And this bear scat poop is purplish, bluish, it's full of berries, full of seeds. So this indicates to me earlier feeding, not current feeding. This, this could have been here, oh, even a matter of a week. It depends on how much rain hits it and makes it dissolve. At this point in the season, the bears have moved on from berries. They're going to be taking full advantage of the salmon run as the window to feed rapidly closes. So this is earlier season feeding. What I want is current season feeding, the salmon. This here is not a human trail that I'm following. This is a bear trail. They may be looking around out in the bay, but they're feeding somewhere up here. And I'm basically following their trail right into their kitchen, I hope. Different bears can favor different fishing spots specific to their survival needs. A mother will fish in strategic locations where her cubs can climb a tree to quickly evade predators. Adolescent bears will sometimes fight with their peers for fishing spots, only to be chased off by an even bigger foe, a dominant male. An older bear with the confidence and size to fish wherever and whenever he wants. See a place up here that looks very promising to me. Oh, 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 here we go. I'm already seeing salmon. Oh, it's unbelievable to see salmon in a stream like this. Check it out. Well, that's my first good sign. The food is here. Oh, look at this. Look at this kitchen table. This is it. This is the beginning of their long journey to get back to the exact place where they were hatched. When salmon hatch in a river, that very location is imprinted into their homing instincts. They'll always be able to pinpoint this location after years of migrating far out into the Pacific Ocean in search of abundant food. It's thought that they're attuned to the Earth's magnetic field, using it like a compass. This internal navigation system will one day guide the salmon back to this exact spot to spawn, as the bear's own instincts drive them here to feed. These fish have been swimming for thousands of miles, evading sharks and whales and all kinds of fish to make it here, only to face the bears. Just incredible. Classic example of what they're doing here. Look at this fish. You can see this is all meat, but it's not touching that. It's gone in after the guts, but mostly went for the brains. Ooh, that stinks. 
the brains, the hump on the back, and the eggs. If bears are being this picky, they're eating well here. This should be a very productive spot. Ah, oh, look at that. Clear example of going after just the eggs. Perfect example. See that? There they are. Bear's done eating. Just wanted the caviar. Left all the meat, ate out the eggs. With hibernation just around the corner, black bears have entered a survival phase called hyperphagia. Their appetites become voracious as they eat to fatten up as preparation for seven months of hibernation. In this do or die stage, they can eat up to 20,000 calories a day. That's 10 times more than a human eats daily. However, they don't eat the flesh of the salmon to get that much needed energy. They target instead the brains, the fatty dorsal fins, and the eggs to prevent themselves from starving to death through their winter sleep. The black bears remove what they need with surgical precision and move on to the next fish leaving telltale carnage behind. And that's how it's done, just like that. So if I, a bumbling, clumsy, slow human, can do that, imagine what a creature has been doing this since its existence can do, how quickly they can get their meal and lots of it. Oh yeah. There's signs everywhere. This place is like a salmon slaughterhouse. The only question is, will they be coming back to feed here again? I see one there. mother and her cub. That's amazing. Black bears spend over a year raising their cubs, forming a strong family bond. Mothers not only feed and groom their cubs, they also cuddle and play games with their offspring. Above all else, though, mother bears are constantly vigilant, protecting the cubs from predators, which can even include other black bears. bit of a bowl, like all the area, it's like a bowl shaped. So if I get up just sort of slightly up a bit, set up camp, I have a good view all the way around. All right, this is where I'll call home. Let's see what happens. Bears are definitely feeding in this area. So setting up my camp here gives me two advantages keeping me off the bear's beaten path and giving me a clear view of any bears that might come through here during the night or into the morning. Let's just see what tomorrow brings. I didn't hear any activity last night. No fishing down by the salmon slaughterhouse. Nothing. Black bears can be highly averse to humans, and their first instinct is usually to avoid us if at all possible. I'm hoping my presence here hasn't caused them to scatter. Check this out. Like this. I'm just surrounded by a ton of berries. Good for me. Also good for the bears. They're certainly gonna feed on the salmon, but they're not shy to eat the berries at the same time. That's why their scat is so full of it all the time. All right, let's go. 
If I continue to track along the waterways where the bears have been fishing, I've got a much better chance at finding them. I can see I'm just gonna follow this creek along here. The crew has to hang way back of me there. I can see them there. If he gets too close to me, just kind of blows my cover. Because if I'm going to have any kind of encounter at all, I've got to go in alone, and I've got to go in silently. I guess they think I'm a bear. Oh, my. Oh, look at this. Oh, that's some serious carnage. Oh, this really ups the ante now. Oh, man. You can see how productive this creek is for the black bears. Fish that are taken out and not even eaten. Look at this one here. Pulled from the creek. Not even touched. I mean, what are they doing, practicing? That's a bear that wasn't very hungry. Maybe just having some fun. One thing is certain. If they're leaving salmon untouched, it means this area has more fish than the bears could possibly eat. And this is even salmon row in their footsteps. Bears can travel many miles driven by the scent of food. But this abundant fishing spot littered with freshly eaten salmon is all the evidence I need to tell me that they're all congregating here. It's only a matter of time before I find them. Here's the thing. For the most part, the black bear. Any sounds I hear in the forest make me a little nervous right now. For the most part, the black bear will bed down in an area where it can still see, survey its domain. Not too far away, not right down in close, but just sort of a mid-range. And that's what I've got right behind me right here. Check this out. All of that grass is pushed down by black bears. Napping, maybe even spending the night. Now, that says that a bear at some point decided this is his meal. And he doesn't want anybody to touch it. This must be somebody's favorite spot to sit and eat. This might actually make a great place to uh, set up a blind and sit. Talk about Goldilocks picking a bed to sleep in. I'm now Goldilocks. Let's hope that it's a nice, medium-sized bear. With bear trails, bear beds, and fish carnage all throughout the salmon slaughterhouse, this is clearly a high-traffic area. And from inside this camouflage blind, I should hopefully be able to watch the bears undetected. That's perfect. As a rainstorm moves in, it's a clear reminder that winter is not far behind. The weather could be an asset. A bear's sense of smell could cover a radius of over 20 miles. But the rain does help mask my scent. In this blind and in the rain, I'll be as hard to smell as I am to see. It's thought that the black bear is nocturnal, but actually avoidance of humans. When you go to places where they don't need to avoid humans, and they're active all hours of the day. You know, black bears need to forage about 20 hours of their day for food, gaining 35% of their body weight. So they do need to be active during the day. So they'll be out there. My the question is, when are they coming back to here? 
While I'm in this blind, I'm hoping to get a good visual on the bears that are feeding in the area. You can tell the females apart from the males by their slightly smaller behinds and their less blocky and stocky bodies. They weigh about 175 pounds, and they're lighter and sleeker looking, with less rounder faces than the adult males. It's the males that'll be the real find. And under this camouflage, I'm hoping to spot them while remaining unseen. My mission, to embed myself with Alaskan black bears and witness their survival skills in action, has proven to be challenging. The bad weather reduces their visibility, dulls their hearing, and even disadvantages their sense of smell. All of this makes them too nervous to venture out into the open. A bear's sense of smell is one of their greatest survival attributes. Seven times more powerful than that of a bloodhound's, it can detect scents from miles away. But the rain can interfere with this extraordinary ability. This rain just keeps getting worse. I haven't seen a bear for hours. I'm not having any luck here. I'm, I'm guessing that this rain is keeping 80% of them in, hidden into the forest. So I'm gonna hike the hills and see if I can find them myself. If they aren't gonna come to me, I'm gonna go to them. that there's any big males close by. They don't want to mess with a big male. So you see a young adult, it's generally on its own, maybe another young adult. It won't go near moms and cubs and it won't go near big males. Yeah, with an adolescent, you really don't know what you're dealing with. With adolescents and females in the area, the question is, where are the larger males? It's a good sign to see a young bear out in the open. But there are other clues that show me a dominant male is nearby. Oh, here we go. There we go. There's some scratches. Check this out. These deep. Scratches here, and from there. Just like everything else they do, it's a point of survival. So the bears will come here, they'll make their markings. This tells all the other bears, this is how big I am. And whether or not you need to think you can challenge me, or whether you better back up, because you know I'm a lot bigger. And judging by the scratches on this tree, there's a lot of bear communication going on around here. This persistent rain may be keeping the bears at bay, but the good news is that it's also causing the creeks to rise, bringing the next wave of spawning salmon. Rain or shine, the abundant salmon will eventually be too enticing for the bears to ignore. All this water, this rain, this runoff, this fresh water as it rises from the storms is a very good thing. Without the rain, the migration of the salmon wouldn't be triggered. Everything would be too dry. These salmon are called pinks, and they come thousands of miles back to this one creek to spawn 
if they were born here, they left and made it all the way down to the ocean, swam thousands of miles. And when they were ready, they came right back to here, likely to within an inch or three of where they were born, just so they can lay their eggs and end their life. Salmon use nearly all of their energy to return to their spawning sites. Once they've spawned, they die soon after. If the black bears are going to make it through winter, they'll need to feast on the last of the spawning salmon before they perish. With the season rapidly closing, the bears are running out of time. This weather's incredibly frustrating. Soaked from above and soaked from within. Oh, what do I got going on here? There's one right along the ridge line there. my blind. That's where the bear is. Black bears aren't territorial. Instead, they have a perimeter, or critical space, wherever they go. Any bear or human that comes within this space risks confrontation. At this close distance, staying still is my safest bet. The black bear can run 35 miles per hour. Out in the open here, I wouldn't stand a chance. If this black bear approaches, I'll need to assert dominance by holding my ground, making myself appear large, and by speaking in a loud, commanding voice, if this were a grizzly, I'd play dead. But with a black bear, the best option is often to stand and fight. I want to get right back into my blind again. Leave the crew some distance away, just trying to capture the action of what happens around me. Time to hunker down. Wait a minute. Oh boy. Somebody decided to kind of take it out on my stand. It's on its side, and it was not windy. Boy, boy. I'll take that as a sign that somebody didn't want me here. Tough luck. I'm still here. pushed over, but it was also dragged that way a ways. The flipping over of my blind could just be the work of a curious adolescent, or it could be from a male bear aggressively defending its space. Either way, it's likely that there are more bears nearby. Time to get inside and hunker down. sitting in a blind, but very clearly a bear has pushed over. A little upset that it was here, maybe just a little bit curious. Surrounded by dead salmon all around me. I'm also actually right on the spot of where a bear sleeps. Maybe that's the bear that pushed this over. And I'm eating 
a salmon sandwich. This just doesn't seem wise, does it? As the rain continues, my chances of finding a large adult male bear get smaller. With an intelligence level similar to the great apes, bears are very clever at hiding themselves. But I do have something else I can try. Time for a little bit of this action. There we go. If there's a big male black bear out there, He's much too clever to show himself while I'm around. I'm hoping these remote cameras can outsmart him. There are ample feeding opportunities along this creek, so I'm spacing my cameras out to try to cover as much of the area as I can. That way, I should be able to observe when any bear comes out to feast on salmon. I'll do. With such highly developed senses, it's almost impossible not to alert these bears to my presence, no matter how cautious I am. By using trail cameras, I can take myself out of the equation for the night. Let's see what happens after the sun goes down in bear country. some of these trail cams. After days of tracking, I still haven't seen a dominant male black bear. So I've set up a series of trail cams along the creek to increase my chances of seeing one in action. Whoa, 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 what have we here? Oh, that ain't right. That's supposed to be closed. It was closed when I left it. Batteries have been pulled out. I've had them pull down my trail cams before. I put that in, see if I can turn it on still. Yeah, there we go. Okay, play videos. Okay. Card not found. Good lord. He ate the card. Well, that's just not fair. All right, next. Watch, I'll be looking at the footage and there'll be a bear over here looking at me. Okay. Nothing. Let's go check the others. Drill cams, drill cams, what did you find? All right, it's this guy. Okay. Oh, I got one. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's a beauty. This could be the bear I've been looking for all this time. This is working. But the, the deal here is that this trail cam is downstream from me. I'm slightly upstream, and they're not coming up to me. What I'm going to do is take my trail cams and just set them all up in a bit of a semi-arc. And if a bear comes through, the idea is it'll walk right through my gauntlet of trail cams. And I'll see what's going on. 
I don't have many chances left to outsmart these bears. The salmon have almost finished their run. Look at that. All that white is rot. They're literally rotting while they swim. Many of them dying and not even making it up the stream. That's going to signal the end of the season for the salmon. Running down the clock for the bears. I figure it's time to go next level. I had to double up on my rain gear for obvious reasons. The weather's not going to quit, and neither will I. The reality is, this is a hotbed of activity. I know that by the trail cams. And I'm tired of hanging out on the outskirts of my campus. I want to be right on top of these guys. So up that tree is where I'm going. It's time for the tree stand. I don't want to be too high up. I'm going to go maybe 12, 15 feet tops. Down on the ground, my tracks and my scent betray my presence. Up here in the stand, I'll have a prime view of the area. And it'll make it a lot harder for the bears to spot me. This should give me the edge to watch them up close. Uh, all right. Whew. All right, set for the night. So the tree stand, with the help of my crew, is in place. All I need now is for my crew to leave and the bears to arrive. It's a good view from here. You can tell this young bear is nervous through his body language. He moves with hesitation, looking over his shoulder and always anticipating trouble. A mature male bear will tend to move with confidence, slow and deliberate. He often plays it cool and ignores the other bears, unless he's forced to act. It's clear that the salmon are keeping these bears in the bowl. But as the end of the salmon run approaches, I'm hoping that the crew and I can find the dominant male before he retreats for hibernation. In the dark, it's not going to be easy to distinguish a juvenile bear from an alpha male. can't track him in the dark. Daylight will give me a chance to search for him in the woods and finally get a close-up look at the bear that's been avoiding me. He went off in that direction. Just over there along the tree line. I'll head downstream, see what I can find down there.
I know that if I keep going, this stream should lead into a big saltwater lagoon. Scat this size could be the mark of a large bear. It can't be far away. Eating and defecating as they go. Skunk cabbage. Start munching on this, munching on berries. I guess those are the appetizers. And we all know what the meal is. It's swimming in this creek. And there's plenty of it. Further down where the creek empties into a saltwater lagoon, my camera crew have caught up with our target. Oh, look at that jackpot. It looks like he has the entire lagoon to himself. He's gotta be about 300 plus pounds. Wow, it's absolutely huge. Finally, a dominant male black bear feasting on salmon. This huge male is too engrossed in fishing to notice the crew's camera. On its hind legs, that bear is likely about seven feet tall. And a male that size is not going to be challenged by any other bears in this area. This is his domain. Bears keep certain critical spaces all to themselves, usually to protect their feeding grounds. And this male has the place all to himself. The salmon are all thrashing around, their last bit of energy exerted on their final run. With seven months of hibernation about to begin, this is the last opportunity for this black bear to eat as many calories as it can. It's been incredible to witness these instinctual hunters at work. Their finely tuned senses are key to their survival. They are the bear's guidance system, telling it where to feed. And it's alarm system, alerting it to risks. It's these instincts that make the black bear the amazing survivalist of the Alaskan wilderness.